<laughs> God, what's happening? Hey everyone, <laughs> back again for another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a pretty awesome deck and uh, that I, I think, I think, I think it's pretty fun. Yeah. It does require a little bit of finesse to play though. Um, I think a lot of the decks we've talked about so far are, so we've talked about, me and you have talked about, or you and I, we, we've talked about the uh, base deck, which is just mono red happiness, or a sing, which is actually kind of techy if you if you it's more about you know how to play it than it is anything else yeah uh we talked about um inspired guns which is uh, i don't know i'm touching it we didn't just talk about it so i don't know why you thought we did um <laughs> we definitely didn't record two of these in the same day um which is not really techy it's just kind of like a play to play and go kind of thing but this deck there's a lot of sweet combos you can yeah. play so let's get started and i'll stop it's it's a aptly named i should do this the other way trader Meter. But this guy's not a traitor, he's just on the traitor card and says traitor in the movie, so... And his flavor text is also traitor. Oh yeah, that's right. And it's got an exclamation mark in it, just in case uh, you he weren't is a loyal convinced. Trooper, actually, <laughs> he himself is loyal. So, uh, traitor Vader, or basically not, the nines is what they call him because it's FN2199. Nines and another character is kind of a thing. Like, yeah. I wrote an article a while ago about uh, like sweets in Destiny, so cards that you put in decks that are kind of independent of the deck around them. This is a really cool one because there's like a, a traitor suite or like the nine suite, right? Yeah. Where you can put nines alongside of other characters and the deck functions with nines doing stuff and your other character is all about the other half of the deck. Yep. So, Nines in, in Django is a thing. Um, nines in Vader is a thing. Nines in Unkar is a thing. I've but seen they've, nines in like Stormtroopers as well, yeah. like Mono Red. Yeah, in fact, like, like all of them revolve around the idea that you play a card on nines, you roll the die in, and you get extra utility out of that. Yep. So that's what this deck's going to revolve around is having nines deal like a lot of immediate damage and then having Vader back it up with like three damage side kill and like having force cards to control. So, um, Seth and I were debating about the battlefield here. He picked Starship Graveyard because um, because you get to put it on top of your deck and draw it again. Um, I thought Moss Ice Lease is a little better, uh, in my opinion, when I've played it, uh, because I haven't actually played with Starship Graveyard. Because I like bouncing like a, a Z9 up and getting a resource and then playing it next turn as a first action. But uh, either one of the two can work. Um, you want to talk about Starship Graveyard a little bit? Yeah, the reason I like Starship Graveyard is this deck, I like to basically put all my equipment on nines, as he was saying, just get the free extra actions, free dice rolls, and, and resolve it. It happens not. infinitely. Like, yep. if you could chain every upgrade in your hand, you have five upgrades, you could play the first one, and it's three, you could probably play every other upgrade in your yep. hand. So. And then with that comes, let's say you have a Holdout Blaster on him, and you upgrade that to a Vibro Knife, Holdout Blaster gets discarded, you get your ambush actions, you're stacking three actions, basically. And at the end of all your crazy actions that you're doing, you can claim to put the upgrade you did discard on top of your deck and basically get the chain going again next turn mm -hmm. again. Yeah, so unless they have mill cards, you're, you're safe. I've actually actually had that done to myself before where someone claims Starship and they had it put on their top and then like I play like a mill and it yeah. puts it in their graveyard again. Um, but or, or you lock yourself out, so you're like, this would be a good idea, and then the the, the changes happen, and you're like, oh crap, now I'm locked into one of those cards. But yep. generally in the sec, that doesn't happen too badly. Um, the ambush stuff you're going to see in a sec with like the upgrades is cool too, especially when you're running Vader and Rogue character because Vibro knife or Vibro knucklers is a thing, and you can like you can hold out blaster, hit a resource side, Vibro knife get another ambush action, knucklers get another ambush action, and yeah. it can be really cool. And that's what one of the a lot of people complain about right now is like action cheating being a thing, but it's okay. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. <laughs> you got to learn to play around it. Uh, so yeah, those are the two characters in the battlefield. These guys are both at elite, so they're both going to have two dice, which is awesome. Two, yeah. Four dice is cool with two characters. Um, and there's very few games that you're not going to pick your own. Uh, battlefield because most decks won't be able to keep up with these guys initiatives so. no and, and with Anakin's a three side and uh, that's that's gonna help you win um, the the thing I would say is like some people might comment on the 22 being a problem yeah. but 
you're going so fast that it doesn't almost doesn't matter. And yeah, and you actually <laughs> there's a card in here you'll play that we want to get first turn little damage your guys, so you can actually start doing stuff. But yeah. let's get into upgrades real quick. So we're gonna talk about holdout blaster first because holdout blaster because there's range damage on a character and holdout blaster is a thing. So um, holdouts are nice. Holdouts to help out. You know, yeah. you play it on first turn, get an ambush and do things. And with nines, you get to play it, roll the die, possibly resolve it, activate nines, roll the dice, and that's yep. your turn. <laughs> so now you have dice for other cards, you know, anything you need dice for, and you just have, yeah, hold yeah. on. So. Something else I like about nines, this is kind of sidetracking, but if you activate him, resolve all of his dice and whatnot, he doesn't have anything else to do, you can also upgrade one of his upgrades and you still get the activation of another weapon mm -hmm. in turn if you need a little extra damage or something like that. Yeah, so his thing, again, just to be clear on that, does not require him to be active to do it. Like, yeah. he doesn't, he can, it's just a passive ability anytime you play a weapon on him. So, you're going to see... Almost every single good upgrade in here is a weapon. So the next one we have in, this is the, this is, so Holdout Blaster is part of what I would call the Finn suite, right? Or the nine suite, where you always play that with him because it's good. Lightsaber is the, like the blue modded version of the Finn suite or the nine suite. So I keep saying Finn, it's F-N. That's why they say it in the movies. It makes yeah. so much sense. Uh, <laughs> um, because you have a blue character, if this was yellow, this would be Vibro Knucklers. If it was red, it probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, but this guy's cool. Again, a lot of this stuff, now a few of them have redeploy. Um, actually, a majority of them have redeploy. So that's good. Yeah. Because after nines dies, and he yeah. will. Uh, and you, usually it's one or the other of these guys becomes lightning rod. Usually people are afraid of nines more than Vader, which surprises me, honestly, because I ended up, I usually end up winning games from Vader, just rolling like two or three damage sides and then like a special side eventually. And yeah, basically you want to suit up. I usually suit up the lightsabers on who I think is going to die first, just to get the most value out of it. And something to keep in mind is redeploy does not trigger Fent Nine's ability. It, um, is it is a move, not play. So keep that in mind when you're playing. If you really want to get value and you need to roll a die twice, you play it on nines. If you want to redeploy later for better things, maybe you want to have three on there so you can upgrade to a ride baton or a rocket launcher, put it on the character that is going to not roll it out. <laughs> yeah. But again, this guy's cool. Two unblockable damage to a character. That means it has three two plus damage sides, even if they're not all activatable directly. Yeah. Uh, lightsabers are really like hit or miss for me. Uh, cause I don't roll them well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, and in nines, I don't really like, I, I don't like lightsabers on nines because you have, they're all conditional. Like you're really hoping for that special side, which is one of five sides, right? right? Or one of six sides, I guess, cause dice are six sided. <laughs> so unless you have money, which you probably won't after playing lightsaber, you really have to just like hope for the best. But this next card though, I, I like on any character. I usually throw these on to Darth Vader, I think. Yeah. Um, you could really put it anywhere. Um, it won't trigger nine's cool triggered ability, unfortunately, but just the plus one and plus two modifier on any symbol, my opinion is really powerful. Um, most of the nines decks I see don't run something like this just since it doesn't really play well with them. But this deck I would say is a little more basically just straight like aggro deck. So this is there just for a little extra oomph to the deck, I would say. Yeah, and I one thing to note is if you did lure of power on nines and it was out, or you had it out off meter if it was a roll, then use this ability to play a thing. I don't believe you can resolve the modifier with it because you're resolving a die from a card ability. So yeah. again, this deck's super techie because there's so many things happening around it that it's good to keep in mind all of the like the rules around resolving a dice from a card ability. But lure of power plus one, it works on anything. Resources, shields, I don't mean discards, whatever you have in here. If there's any focus sides, right? Uh, you get it on everything. So yeah. it's really a toolbox. You just play yep. it on what you need it on. Uh, of course, so this is another card that's part of the nine suite uh, is rocket launcher because yeah. <laughs> because of rocket launcher. You can do absurd things with this <laughs> and nines in a turn. So <laughs> yeah, uh, especially when you got that money. Um, I usually play. I try to play it later because yeah. I don't really have money at the beginning. Yeah, usually this is something that you'll upgrade one of your other equipments or upgrades. Um, so you have two resources. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then usually, ideally, if you have like a lightsaber on FN or nines, you'll replace the lightsaber with rocket launcher, hopefully having like two resources so you could get two rolls out of it and hopefully resolve both of those rolls. So. Yeah. And 
Uh, yeah, I agree. And the discard a vehicle from play could be cool coming up, so that's oh, going to yeah. be pretty sweet. That'll be very relevant, I believe. And two two damage into two different characters is the best multiple damage besides the U wing, which can't actually be in uh, villain. So, yeah. um, Viber Knife is the next one, and this is the third card that's part of the fin uh, the nine suite. God, I keep doing it. <laughs> nine suite. Uh, Viber Knife makes your lightsabers, makes Finn's dice, makes Anakin's dice, and the control ton, uh, the ride ton near broken just because of the damage you can do without it being able to be shielded uh, i'm sorry that's not right without it being able to be blockable yeah. which means you can't force illusion you can't like do weird stuff with characters like it's just completely off the table with viber in the pool and so viber a really good one to play on nines turn one because you're like it's out there now i can do whatever i want and just leave it sitting and yeah yeah and i actually sometimes really like rolling the blank side on knife because or turning it with a card you'll see later um just because they can't do anything with yeah, it. They're not going to remove a blank die they unless can't. they're and really afraid of Viber Knife. So. And then when you're done later, maybe re-roll it or just claim without it. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. It's like, uh, the, yeah, being able to get a blank side or something like that, or they, they can't remove is nice. So Viber Knife non-damaged sides are actually still good because of its effect. Yep. Um, okay, final one, and this is the final card, the fifth card, or fourth card in the suite for nines is the Z6 Riot Baton. Solid money. Yeah, this card, I'm not gonna lie, I've been very disappointed with it just since I always seem to roll those two blank sides. <laughs> Did you get to re-roll it? Yeah, but when you do re-roll it, you don't get to activate it with nine still. Yeah. So they it's funny because they're supposed to work really well together, but in a way they kind of like nombo each other. But the thing I do like about this is you're you're right. So if you don't hit it is three damage sides that you can resolve, so yeah. that's always good. So Hitting a two or the three or even a resource is good because you can just resource it out and play something else. But if you discard a card and you have two Riopetons out, you can re-roll both Riopetons after discarding the card to re-roll the Riopetons. Yeah. So yeah. we were talking about in our last video how having the free re-roll is great, and this card gets to re-roll whenever it's rolled, which is just like roll on that gets spoiled. It's just like roll a die, then roll another die, then yeah. roll it again, then roll it one more time, <laughs> and you're like, okay. <laughs> Um, I feel like that card should have like BB 8s art on it. It does. does you haven't it seen really? it? Yeah, no. it's just him rolling oh through the gosh. desert. Yeah, that's amazing. And someone made like a <laughs> folk card where it's like roll on and then roll again and then keep rolling and then roll one more time and they just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> so I agree. Uh, I think the Nambo there is is, uh, is a little weird uh, since yeah. he's the one that uses it, which is kind of interesting. But it's just the yeah. it is still a really effect. good card and it has redeploy. So yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of the Riot Baton. Uh, I think it's like one games for me because it's just so fast and it's so efficient it's so weirdly efficient for having two blank sides yeah and most of the time honestly you'll upgrade it onto like a different item or whatever so you will only play like one tops resource for it to yeah. get it out there i typically actually play ride baton with um enrage so i try to get enrage and you'll see that in a sec and then ride baton first turn and then just like have ride baton in case i need it later because yeah. I would upgrade a Riot Baton to something else if I could because yeah. of the two blanks, but... I mean, like a rocket launcher. Yeah, and then that's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> or like with a, like if you're using Moss Eisley, it's like popping back Riot Baton and throwing it out every turn to get like consistent two plus damage. So we're going to go into events now. There's no supports in this deck because it's too fast and you know yeah. supports are extra actions. Doubt can be really good. It also can be incredibly bad. I uh, feel like this is one of those almost auto-includes in every villain deck, just since it's a free re-roll for your opponents and whatnot, and it can, almost, it can turn into a removal. I'm going to agree with you as long as you're not running a yellow character, because if you're running yellow, I think there's way better removal, like one quarter portion, yeah. and no, he doesn't like you, that basically push out doubt. Yeah. Um, I do like doubt in, in non-yellow decks, though. I think it's a kind of, like, it's the only... Villain neutral removal, which doesn't mean much right now, but it's probably going to stay there for a while. Yeah. Um, uh, four strike because bait and switch is a thing, and this is a really good card. Uh, one resource, so that's not very much. Turn one of your dice to the side, showing melee damage, and resolve it. So Vader's three side if you have two resources. Right, Baton's three side if you have two resources. Even just like turning it to a, the blank to a two side is fine. Yeah, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking way much, but yeah, <laughs> getting two damage from Vader is still fine. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's it's good. And it, this is another one of those kind of just like closer cards where you're like in the last round of the game and basically looking for any extra damage you can get. This will help you get there and close out a game. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see a card later that's gonna do the same thing. So yeah. uh, higher high ground. 
Uh, you should be game controlling Battlefield most of the time, so high ground isn't very hard to play, and uh, I think it's, again, we're, this deck's very focused around dealing damage, so high ground fits uh, yeah. as a one of. I, I'm not a huge fan of uh, play if you control the Battlefield cards in most decks, because most decks I play don't get their yeah. Battlefield consistently, so <laughs> especially like the, the Inspired Guns deck, but... Uh, this deck, this card I absolutely love for this deck because there's so many resource red sides. Like, oh, yeah. Imperial War Machine is fucking awesome. Yeah. Pardon my French. Uh, it's good, and it's going to get even better because uh, the the like, the like big cannon, the sixth resource cannon, is <laughs> is going to be able to be played for free with Imperial War Machine, and that's going to be really cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, Maybe that's something we could look into on putting that on nines. Is that big? It's a, it's a support. But uh, yeah, that would yeah. be really cool if you could put on nines. <laughs> Uh, there's there's characters that are like uh, activate a vehicle after you activate this character. There's uh, villain characters like that coming out. So uh, again, vehicles are going to be a thing. Yeah, you hear me? I, I already you. believe they are a thing. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> next card's isolation because you're playing blue. Um, so doubt isolation are typically the cards that you use for removal in, like I think non yellow. Yeah, because uh, if you're running. Uh, blue. Cause Th this one is a little conditional because it is only a character die, and there are some character dice that aren't too relevant or scary. So a lot of times this will just be used to like reroll dice and whatnot. But it's nice for hitting like Anakin side or yeah. for hitting. Uh, what am I thinking? Um, a Kylo side would be good. Vader or Palpatine. This is great against Palpatine. Yeah, like absolutely super good. <laughs> uh, this other card is the other kind of closer card. So lightsaber throws is awesome. So. You have so much melee damage in this deck. Lightsaber throw basically just says pay one to deal two damage to yep. character. <laughs> and that is, again, that's another closer card. So everything around here is revolving around damage. Um, yeah. Basically just as aggressive as possible. I call it turn everything sideways and punch your opponent in the face, basically. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's, a, that's what you should call it, uh, Trader Vader. It's a longer name, but it's more Afro applicable. Uh, manipulate, uh, I like. Uh, this is one of those ones that I think you could use well with the vi Vibro Knife if they're running like heavy removal and it's like based on damage type stuff. But it's just nice to be able to turn aside to blank. Yeah, and basically, this one doesn't really have much in the in the ways of defense and whatnot. So there's like maybe those like four to six cards in here that will do that. And this one's nice because it'll still have some sort of effect, like he said, with Vibra Knife and whatnot. And you can still reroll the die that you change to a blank, too. So One thing to keep in mind is this deck is very resource light, too. So like a lot of events that are free need to be put in here in order to do things still without having to leverage resources. So yep. one cost, zero cost. There's a two cost card, but it's broken good. Yeah, we'll get um, there. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say, uh, put another use. You could switch these two. So you could either have two yeah. use of forces or two manipulates or one of each. And yeah. so these are the kind of cards you can mess around with because they do a similar thing, but r this one costs money. So if you did want to run a little bit lighter and have more active for other cards, you could probably just run two manipulates or yeah. something like that. Honestly, I think two manipulate would probably be the right way to go. Use the force, me playing with it and whatnot. It seems a little underwhelming for this deck. I do love the card. I think it's amazing. But it is a little bit slow for this one, unfortunately. And, and that's and then and the it one just becomes a discard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and then uh, card I, I'm forced to set the put two of in uh, is Tactical Mastery. Yep. Um, you just need money in this deck and being able to get extra. Oh, I'm sorry. You need you need actions in this deck and being able to do uh, Tactical Mastery is is gonna win you games. Yeah. Um, Especially when you can chain like okay, let's put a Vibro Knife on FN, roll his dice out, get the ambush action with mm -hmm. the ambush action, play that, and then you get. You can end up chaining like four or five actions in a row if you have the right cards in hand. It keeps you competitive with like really fast decks. And I at first I thought this card was logistics because I always get confused between logistics yeah. and tactical mastery. And like logistics could be cool in this deck too because you do have resource sides, so you could roll the hero card. So. No, it's not because it's I've used it. Oh, in, yeah. I've used it in. Uh, I've used it in first order stormtrooper decks because okay. they have one resource side. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, but logistics could be an include in this deck too if you wanted to, you know, take out maybe some of the cards that cost money. Like, you might be able to replace Tactical Mastery with Logistics if you wanted to. Um, I do think he's right, though. Uh, yeah. It does do a lot for you. And it, with Logistics, and you, I don't think you'd be able to run Logistics in this deck because you don't really have many resource sides, unfortunately. Well, but the thing with Logistics is, is that you have two, die, two red dice that roll resources, so you could use Logistics on 9's first turn and get a bunch of money then actually yeah. play out a bunch of stuff. So 
I, logistics is hard to justify when you haven't hit it a lot. So yeah, sit, times just sit there and be like, this is the worst card in the world. It's in my hand. It's not doing anything. Other times you're like, holy crap, I'm so glad I have this card because now I have money and I can do things. And I, I think even having just four sides in here that are red resource sides is still good for logistics. But yeah. um, uh, the final card is one that Seth has used against me into great effect. Um, we've ha we have them now. Two cost event. So up on the upper side of the cost curve for this deck, but this is like this is closer stuff. Yeah. Like this will end the game real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so you basically turn a bunch of damage. You put a bunch of dice to damage sides if you control the battlefield. So you probably will. <laughs> yeah. so this one's turn up to four of your dice to side showing damage, ranged or melee. So if you have the right upgrades out, even if you just have them two out, you can set it, if you don't have resource to pay for it, to deal six damage mm -hmm. with just that. So that's good. If you do have the resources to pay for it, you can do somewhere up to like 10, 12. Look, damage, yeah, and even so. if you have like one or two upgrades, you bump it up to like the resource cost damage side. So yep. you could do like with one Rabbiton, you do eight. With uh, two Rabbitons, you do 10. Like it just goes up and up and up. And yep. I guess you'd have to only spend it four, so I'm, my math's wrong. But it go it gains value with more dice, and so yeah. uh, it I, might be a little greedy of me putting this in here as a two of. Yeah, but I, I can see that. I like the card a lot, so. <laughs> yeah, I think like I think yeah. If you if you ran those two of, you maybe take out higher ground or something. I, again, I'm not a huge fan yeah. of control battlefield effects, but this deck you probably are going to do it. So yeah. Um, major problems here. Um, major problems. Not rolling Anakin's three damage side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of times they, they tend to hose one of the characters really fast at the beginning of the game, and you only have two characters, so that can kind of bring down your productivity a little bit. Uh -huh. um, Not as bad as other decks. Like, Django 9 really hurts from losing a character. The nice part about this 9-sweet combo is that... Vader can kill stuff on his own. Yeah, both of them can definitely do plenty on their own. So. There's not a ton of control here, and so you're lo you're you're basically rush. It's yeah. rush, and yeah. so you're hoping that you don't really. You're hoping that you kill before they can yeah. do all their fun, fancy stuff, right? Against like Palpatine and like the Pomaz decks, basically just a race. See who yeah. kills first. <laughs> and that's why logistics and or I'm sorry, tactical mastery helps, and things like we have them now helps for bad rolls. So like. Again, you're you're discarding cards to reroll a lot in this deck. You're not doing card abilities to manipulate. There's um no focus icons, I think, at all. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily bad because they're all replaced with damage sons. But yep. <laughs> uh and cards like lightsaber throw and uh, um force strike are, are really good for kind of again, closing stuff out. But um it's kind of heavily focused in one way. So a deck like uh nines Unka, or fun car is what they're calling it probably functions a little bit more consistently in this terms of uh, being able to control and damage. But if you hit Vader's sides right, this deck wins in like the first five turns. Like, yeah. it, it's ridiculous. I mean, most games, if you don't win within the first five turns, you're probably already lost. Mm -hmm. I've definitely won games in the first like three turns with this deck just because of how aggressive it can be. Super light on resources, though. And actually, yeah. I, I thought you had Enrage in here, but you don't. But if you are looking to, to get some more resources, a turn one Enrage is a really good way to do oh, it. Yeah. Uh, you just pop Anakin for one. That <laughs> one was in here for a little while. I don't remember what I took it out for, but I ended up feel liking I didn't need that little extra one resource. It, I didn't like that it took an extra action just to get the one resource. To me, it didn't feel that worth it. I yeah, can see yeah. why people would want to use it. Just I can to be also able to see play your cards. Like the idea of. Um, what was it? Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Something around the lines of, like, you don't... It's, like, too... It's too slow, I guess, but you don't really... You want to have a little bit of control in here, and you miss out on that if you... And it's... Oh, that's what I was going to say. So, it's really only good if you get it in your opening hand. Yeah. Like, if you get one in your opening hand, it's great. If you don't, then you're hitting Anakin when he could already have five damage on him, and putting him in range of, like, a one-shot, and... Or even late game, if he's already dead, and all you have is FN. And it's a real it, card. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I can definitely see why that might not be in here. Like, and you don't want to put it out of one of because it is a start in your hand card. So you yeah. want to run to two, which takes up other slots. So, uh, the I think the mid range version of this is like has it in it because it needs it, but uh, this is not that. Yeah, <laughs> this is basically like I said earlier: turn everything sideways. Yeah. Don't care too much about what your opponent does. Just try to kill their dudes. Mm -hmm. All right, opening hands. So, hold out or vibro. I would like to see two of each of those. <laughs> so you want four, four of them in your hand. <laughs> That's like magical Christmas land for me. Just like do all. So the you want to do like magical thing. Christmas land opening hand or like average opening hand? Average opening hand is probably 
what we'll most likely see. So let's do that. <laughs> Magical Christmas Land is is two holdouts, two vibro knives, and let's say one of the three costs up one of the three cost upgrades. I think. Yeah. Or. Yeah, I can see that. Because like even it's all damage the first turn. You're like two, two. Maybe a doubt or something. Yeah. Maybe some control. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking like, how do we kill one character on turn one? <laughs> or on round one. So Magical Christmas Land, I think I like I think I like Viber Knife over Holdout because it's melee damage and when you're playing it on yeah. uh, Finn or Knights. Well, ideally on average, like I do have a lot of opening hands where I have two Viber Knives, two Holdout Blasters, or one of each. And that is almost like one of the most ideal opening hands you can have. One of each. One of each, I would say, okay. just to get the two free action or the two free dice rollouts, and then again, if you do roll the blank side, you do not get to resolve it. If you roll the mod side, you don't get to resolve it. But there's a pretty good chance you're gonna get something from rolling it. Yeah, and um, then usually if you have these in hand, I want to say usually go hold out blaster and replace the hold out blaster with a vibro knife mm -hmm. just to keep that extra damage out. Yeah, or the unblockable. Rather. I'm thinking doubt. Yeah, doubt's good for an opener. Really, your opening turns are usually pretty light on actions. Usually, if you have an equipment, you'll suit them up and do all the stuff there. Yeah. But I think having this in your opening hand could be good since your opening hand is so fast that next turn you get to yeah you get to do that. That could be good. And then I don't. I mean, ideally, you're gonna probably get you're gonna have discard fodder. So your fourth card, I think, is a slot for the rolls. So yeah. something that you want to, don't want to keep. So any of the events suite, I think, would be yep. good. Uh, maybe a lure if you didn't need it. Um, again, you're probably only playing... It, your, your chances of getting a resource from your roll on Finn are not high. So you're probably not going to play one of the three costs turn one, which is what the Enrage is supposed to do, is it lets you like drop a two, then drop a three, then go. But yeah, so four slots, just a reroll slot, I think. Yeah. And maybe this. Even in the opener hand, like having something maybe like a rocket launcher or control baton, sure. just to have the next turn abilities of being able to do See, cool I was worried things. that would get discarded if I had it as only card in my hand. That's the only thing I would That's true, about. yeah. Because, like, depending on the deck you're playing against, that can definitely be a problem. Yeah. But if that does happen, you can just start That's to great it. Right. So. I see there's so much value. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, we are doing Destiny tournaments every Tuesday, every other Tuesday and Sunday. So if you check the calendar, it'll make more sense when you see it in person. Basically once a week, though. So. Yeah. Um, not all of those will be OP kits, but they will all be giving out packs. So keep that in mind. Um, come down and play whenever you want. We have a Facebook group for Final Fantasy or Fantasy Flight card games. So not Final Fantasy card games because that nobody plays that here. <laughs> um, so come on down or you can use the group to tell people you're coming. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you. All right, Eric.